<laughs> Welcome back to Chateau du Pont. Uh, we are about to do our tour of the backyard and uh, the walled garden area. So, why don't you come on through? <laughs> Today we will be going into the walled garden. You can also see we have this little back stretch here. It would be a great run for dogs or something. <laughs> um, this is the tank for our boiler. Yes. We have to replace this roof because it is asbestos. Or They didn't test it, but it looks to be asbestos. Yeah, it looks like it's asbestos. So we need to have it removed. The main thing really about asbestos, it's not harmful if it's not disturbed. It's when you disturb it or it's deteriorating or things like that, that is when it becomes harmful. So uh, yeah, this, and also unfortunately, a portion of one of our outbuildings, they also suspect has an asbestos roof. So. Um, it's a big portion. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, asbestos roof removal is extremely expensive. Um, so it's probably not something we can do in the immediate future, but in, <laughs> you know, in the next few years. Hopefully we'll get to do that. And uh, also repair the little hole in the oiler housing, oil housing. <laughs> but here we have the walled garden, which is just beautiful. Um, there's so much potential for this space, so much that we want to do. Um, a lot of changes that we need to make because again, it's been rather neglected for quite a while. But let's start by showing you the plants that are in here. So we have some grapevines along here. This is apparently a rhubarb, which I'm not super familiar with uh, as an adult. I know I, uh, as a child, had my grandma's strawberry rhubarb pie. Wasn't a huge fan, but I need to try rhubarb again as an adult. Um, you also have black currant growing back here. We have some uh, very unpleasant compost piles. That <laughs> Try not to showcase that too much. Yeah, we're going to need to move those um, because I do want to have a compost pile to help fertilize in the garden, but that's not it. <laughs> um, oh, as you see here, we have four raised beds currently. Six. Oh, six. Wow, I can't count. <laughs> we have six raised beds currently. You I can just also see... installed two just now. Yeah. Um, you can see I was pulling out a lot of these, this um, overgrown marjoram the other day. Not done, but made a lot of progress. Um, so I think this will be an herb bed because we obviously already have chives, marjoram, sage. Um, we have some rosemary here. I'll probably add, you know, some thyme, some tarragon. Um, a few other little things, maybe some savory and, and such. There's some mint growing over there. So probably one or two beds for the herbs because I really like to use herbs when I'm cooking. And we'll use them a lot. And um, you know, the, the previous owners had kind of tossed out a lot of the flowers um, in the compost pile and then Dora decided to plant them in these beds to save them. <laughs> yeah, my mom went on a rescue operation. Yeah. Tried to replant some of the flowers that they had torn out and just yeah. thrown in the compost pile. So we will probably move these to some different pots to go around the property. Um, I'm really imagining that these beds will mostly be used for herbs and vegetables. Um, we are definitely going to add some more. This is not enough. <laughs> we will definitely add some more. We have a lot of space this way we can keep going. Um, but really, I would love to be able to produce um, the majority of our own fresh produce that we eat here within this garden. We have so much space to work with and things grow so prolific prolifically here that I really think we could. We could grow a lot of our own food, um, at least in terms of fresh produce, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, fresh herbs. Um, so I'm excited for that. We have noticed a few instances around a few little, I don't know, bit of evidence of uh, moles mm -hmm. in here. So might build them up just protect them or when, if I can bring my dogs a uh, Spartan and Scooter hopefully sometime in the spring bring them over that will uh, take care of the mole problem but we yep. shall see but yeah to be I do. protected and secured yeah we did uh, we planted a little bit of lettuce here for the winter not not quite enough but we're just getting started there's a lot going on um, 
Dora also wanted some strawberries, so she put some here. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have several more beds put in and move some of the, the flowers out to pots for around the property and make this really a vegetable and herb garden, primarily. Um, also, let's see, going along further this way, we have another raspberry bush that, uh, well, <laughs> I think it used to be a raspberry bush. I don't know if it's still here or not. We might have to start over because this here is bindweed. Not good. We need to get rid of this. We obviously have a lot of the stinging nettle coming in, so we need to clear this out and kind of restart. We did buy some more raspberry canes, so we'll probably try to put some in here. This, what is this? Oh, some more current. I think this is the red current. Yeah, I think the black current is over on, try not to get the compost piles on there too much. <laughs> I think that's the black current. If I yes, recall. and this is the red current. And then here, ugh, again, we have a lot of this bindweed that really needs to come out. It got just out of control. There's quite a bit in Terrible. the front of the property too, or by the, uh, the woods and the gatehouse that we have to take care of, yeah. get it out of there. And it looks like this used to be some sort of a berry bush, but I don't know whether it's really yeah, I'm trying to recall survive what or not. the previous owners said it was. I can't recall off the top of my head. Yeah, we'll see if we can get all this other stuff out and see if it'll survive. Not sure. Um, here we have some sort of a basin. Not really sure what it was used for, but there's some water in there. Um, and then this is the stage two of the septic system that we told you about. Um, again, you have little access points there. It's not as obnoxious looking as the other one, but we might put some little shrubs or flowers or things to disguise Beautiful that a little area. bit. Yes. This is a apple, a climbing apple tree, isn't it? Correct. This is an apple tree that they were going to train to, um, in the espalier method where it's kind of spread out and flat against the wall. Um, it's not like that currently, but it would be a fun experiment to try to do that ourselves. So we'll probably try to do that. After um, we replace the shingles on the yeah. point here. Unfortunately, yeah, the walled garden, the, the top does need some work and some replacement here. You can see some of the shingles have come off. We probably will. Actually, the repointing isn't too bad here. You can see, unfortunately, they did use concrete again in some parts. Not a good idea, but but it still seems fairly sturdy in here. So this will probably be a, a much later project once we've dealt with some of the more um, unstable walls. This, I'm pretty certain they said was kiwi. I thought the kiwi was over here because they said it was growing back. Well, they said it was both of these. So oh. I'm pretty certain. Okay. Again, don't quote me on this. I'm not familiar with kiwi. Never grown them. And uh, it's hard to tell when things are dying back so much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to report back in the spring. We have some more of the stinging nettle coming in, unfortunately, and some other weeds. But I'm pretty sure one of these is a kiwi plant. Whether or not it fruits, we'll see. I'm interested to see it. Pretty sure it's this one here. Oh, sorry. This one. <laughs> Still learning my camera pointing. <laughs> and back here, we have this little tree grove, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, as far as I'm aware, none of these are fruiting or food producing trees of any kind. Um, there is some vines back there that we need to cut back. Cause I remember when I came through in June, checking it out, there yeah. was a lot more growth and I'd cut my leg on something. Yeah, we do need to clear some things out. Obviously there's a bunch of just dead branches and, and debris kind of laying around. Um, I'm thinking we might maybe put in like some tables and chairs, just kind of a relaxing little area to sit and enjoy some quiet out here. Um, there is back over there, another apple tree. I don't know how well you can see it, but it has gotten pretty badly choked out by some of the other plants nearby. We do have to clear that out a little bit so we can get to the apples better and it can grow better. And now that brings us to these apple trees, or sorry, these fruit trees. Right there we have a quince. Um, this one I'm pretty certain was pear. This is, these are both pear. 
um, also pear, I think. And then nope. we have an Looks apple like tree here, obviously. You're right, it is pear. What's that? I said you're right, it is pear. I thought it was apple just because there's so many apples scattered around, but there are some pears as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, this one is another pear. This is an apple, obviously. This one might be pear again. We need to uh, look at the leaves and get a better idea of what the different leaf shapes look like. Um, yeah, pretty much all the fruit's gone, so you can't really look to see. But there are several apple and pear trees around here, which is exciting. Unfortunately, like I said in our backyard tour, we got here so late in the season that most of them were gone, <laughs> especially the pears. The pears were all pretty much gone. Yeah, I think we um, saved two. Yeah, and then uh, it was really just apples, which we did get a lot. And as you can see, there are still several on the tree, but unfortunately, almost all of those got bug eaten. Um, you can't tell from back here, but if you look up close, the bugs got to them because they really weren't being maintained or taken care of at all. So we need to do that for next year so we get a much bigger harvest. Um, you can also see all of this, which again, was just kind of grass and branch clippings that the previous owner put down against this wall, but we need to take it out. Um, I don't think the moisture being against this back wall is going to be good for it. And also it's really not going to serve us any benefit and it's kind of an eyesore really. So we're going to have to take all this out. It extends along this wall here. And then we have... Giant mushroom. <laughs> yeah. There are some very interesting and odd fungi growing here. <laughs> a potting shed. Yes, a potting shed, which we may or may not turn into a chicken coop. Uh, we may end up, you know, buying or building something different. We'll see. Um, this is what actually used to be the chicken coop. It's fairly small. Um, so we'll see what we do. We, I don't think we'll end up using this. We do want chickens at some point. We know that we would like to have our own eggs. Um, but exactly what we use for the chicken coop, we're not certain of yet. <laughs> and over here, we get to the blackberries and the raspberries. These ones actually are thriving. See here, again, it's kind of the end of the season, but this one had yellow raspberries, which are quite delicious. Um, there are a couple, yeah, you can still see a couple left, but there's a yellow raspberry, a red raspberry, and a blackberry bush. And there are also just wild blackberry bushes growing in abundance here. Everywhere in the forests, um, across the river, everywhere you drive along the road, realistically, you can get blackberries anywhere. <laughs> Raspberries, not so much. Here, we have some gooseberry. And this one, I'm not entirely certain what it is. It might be, yeah, actually, this is more gooseberry. So we have two gooseberry plants here. I have never had gooseberry. I'm excited to see what it tastes like. Makes good jam. And then uh, here, we, we mentioned we have a little mint here. We might plant something else that grows kind of in abundance because mint is quite prolific. I don't really want to plant it with the other herbs because much like the marjoram, I worry it might choke them out. Mint is notorious for really, really growing a lot. <laughs> so we'll see, we, may, we might put something else in this box here, but that is the wall garden as it stands currently and some of our future plans. We'll probably put a few more fruit trees in here, um, maybe some plums or something. Um, yeah, I'm trying to call it, I could have sworn the owners, the previous owners that said there was walnut somewhere yeah. right here, but I haven't seen any evidence of it. Yeah, I vaguely remember hearing that as well. Um, we'll look around some more, possibly in that little grove, possibly in, it might be in that forest along the front. We do know that there is a lot of sweet chestnut growing nearby. Um, 
not horse chestnut, which is toxic, <laughs> but the actual edible sweet chestnut, which, which is so exciting um, because that's really a big staple of French winter dishes. Chestnuts were a big thing and really sustained huge portions of the population throughout the winter. So I'm excited to learn and start cooking with chestnuts. It's not something I've ever really cooked with before in the US, but there are tons of those growing in abundance here as well. So that's exciting. But here you have the walled garden before, kind of before. <laughs> yeah, a few weeks yeah. <laughs> after the before, but yeah, a few weeks. still we've been doing a before little bit. enough of the work, well, before all the work, really. Before most of the work. We've done a little bit in here, but not a lot. Um, so I'm very excited to see where it goes. <laughs> and that's it for now. Now it's time to slip the chestnut. Ha, ha, ha.